Hello, welcome back to Overbooked. I'm Amanda and today we're going to be doing my October wrap up. So October was pretty um, overwhelming and overbooked. So I've only read four books and I was also participating in a readathon that I, I'm not gonna lie, did not do well. I read like two books for it. You were supposed to read eight. It was a very sad start a very sad first attempt to a readathon, but um, what are you gonna do? It was, I've just, I've been so busy and it sucks and I shouldn't have even signed up for it in the first place, but I did. So going forward, lessons learned, I will make sure that the next time I sign up for a readathon, I am prepared and have enough free time and are participating in it. I think also a readathon that's less than a month long because the readathon I tried to do was like the whole month of October and I'm just like is it done yet like do I have to constantly be reminded that I'm not doing this well for the entire month sorry for all the people who did that readathon with me and or who were doing it not I was I, what I was doing it with them um but so sorry that I like dropped out the face of the earth and didn't keep up Regardless, I read other books, so let's dive into what I read. So one of the first books I read this month was The Last Guest House by Megan Miranda. And I've read another book by her and it was called All the Missing Girls. I really enjoyed that one. So The Last Guest House takes place um, in like this like touristy town in Maine. And the main character is like going through all this stuff because her best friend died the year before. And she's currently employed by her best friend best friend's family and she oversees all their rental properties in this touristy town and all these like strange things start happening she's like questioning the death of her friend like because it's ruled a suicide but she has other thoughts that maybe her friend was murdered so it's this really cool like suspense thriller mystery book it's really awesome and fun and it was actually a really good book to start the whole month of october because it was kind of like freaky and kind of scary at times and you know that's the month of October that's what it's for so really enjoyed that book and I believe this was one of Reese Witherspoon's picks as well this year so I can't remember what month it was but it was pretty good nice pick Reese the next book I read was Karamo my story of embracing purpose healing and hope and that was obviously by Karamo Brown from Queer Eye also PSA Queer Eye just came with a Queer Eye just came out with a new season Queer Eye in Japan and I just noticed it last night and it's fucking awesome. I, I watched all the episodes already. I think there's only three. It was amazing. Go watch it. I cried within the first like 10 minutes. So amazing. So the reason why I wanted to read Karamo was because he was supposed to come to um, this college that's right like next to my boyfriend and I's apartment. He ended up not being able to show up because of his commitment to Dancing with the Stars and yada 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 so Anthony came instead which I'm not mad about I loved him he was awesome he was great he cooked for us I didn't get to eat it but I gotta watch him cook with somebody and it was really fun and I really liked it and he was awesome to talk like listen to his talk but it was just like <laughs> kind of a bummer because I did all this homework on Karamo and he didn't show up but that's fine it's okay I understand they're hustling they're they're fine but Karamo was great. Uh, I learned a lot about Karamo Brown that I didn't know before. You know, I, I had this like vague understanding that he used to be a social worker, but he went through a lot of stuff in his life. It's just really cool to see the background of these, like your favorite figures from these television shows that you love. And, you know, he grew up in this family where, you know, his dad didn't approve of his sexuality and he doesn't have this awesome relationship with his dad because of that. Went through multiple like addictions to different vices and, how he strongly wants to be monogamous and he refuses to be with anybody that doesn't want to be and then his relationship with his current i think they're just engaged right now i don't know if they're married yet but um his relationship with his fiance and how that started and of course the whole story of him finding out that he had a son and then adopting his son's half brother and it's just an awesome awesome memoir to read it was great it was touching it was uh just a great story to read and it just gives you really a, a great background on his methodology when he's trying trying to do in queer eye and how he actually has a lot of like knowledge and background experience in what he's doing and it just was awesome and i love him even more now 
The third book I got was from the Snacks podcast. I've mentioned it before, I'll link it below again, but I haven't been listening to it lately, so this isn't definitely a current book they've talked about, but it was called The Cadaver King and the Country Dentist, A Story of Injustice in the American South. And this has two authors, Radley Balco and Tucker Carlton. I think this kind of fits into the whole like spooky theme of October as well, because it was fucked up and really scary and creepy. So this is um, a nonfiction story and it takes place in Mississippi. This book just like kind of goes over these two men, um, a medical examiner slash coroner and a like dentist, like a, an expert bite, bite mark analysis guy and how they were pretty much con, like con men. Like they didn't have any medical experience. They didn't have any of the right certifications to be doing what they were doing, but they testified on like hundreds and thousands of cases and they used testimony that wasn't accurate and wasn't scientifically based. And they sent a lot of people that were innocent to jail and the story, the book focuses on two men, how they were in jail for I think over a decade, both of them, for a crime that they didn't commit because of the testimony by these two men. And it's just crazy how much people get away with and how much people are so convinced that what they're listening to is true and refuse to see or demand um, backup information to verify it. Um, of course, obviously, like this was all like in the favor of the white population in Mississippi. I mean, most of these um, people that went to jail or prison were people of color so it's like kind of like the modern day equivalent of slavery I, I feel like it's just like you're sending these um people of color to prison then they didn't do anything wrong and they sit there for however long until somebody the problem and tr tries to resolve the issue for them and if that even happens um in this case the innocence project um, stepped in and did a lot of work to get these two men out of prison and it was just astounding how like how wrong some of these crimes were and how obvious it was that these people who were committed didn't do the crime. Um, even after these two men were proven innocent and the person who actually did the crime came forward and confessed, the investigator and the prosecutor, I think it was the prosecutor on the case, still was convinced that the men had something to do with the crime that they were convicted of. Like he was like, well, they might have not have done it, but they were probably involved in the crime. Like they had some help or knowledge on it. And it's just mind blowing how brainwashed and like insane you have to be to not have all the facts in front of you and refuse to believe everything. Um, honestly, this, this book just made me super angry and it just, made me want to throw it out the window sometimes but I thought it was it was very good and it was very eye-opening and it it's about stuff that I have no idea I, I don't have any information about and I've never really thought about I've never thought about the coroner system or what happens to a body after it's dead murdered or you know injured or whatever like I've never thought of that process and how many things can go wrong afterwards and I my i my brain just exploded <laughs> with all the new information. I highly recommend this book. Um, I think there are some things that were problematic about it. They Sometimes they don't really come out and really say that the, the like prosecutors and the two men who were essentially con men weren't racial, like they, did, they weren't doing these things because they hated black people. But it's, it, it, I think to me, it's pretty clear they were racist. Um, but you know, I guess, you can be your own judgment if you read it. But I, I enjoyed this book. I, I enjoyed nonfiction and it was a very spooky read for October, for sure. So the last book I read, I did a whole book review on it and I think it's the perfect book if you're looking for a book for Halloween next year or if you still wanna keep the spooky season going. And it's called The Broken Girls by Simone St. James. So the book centers around the character of Fiona and Fiona's sister was murdered 20 years prior to this book and she um, isn't super convinced on all the facts and the conclusions that came out of the murder investigation of her sister. So she's constantly haunted by that. Her sister was murdered at the site of this boarding school that was recently bought. So Fiona, who is a journalist, decides to investigate the reason why somebody bought this 
haunted boarding school and while she's investigating they discover a body on the property and so she not only is investigating the history of this boarding school and the reason why it was bought she goes into like who was this girl that was murdered and what happened to her and what's her story and it's this really crazy fun scary read and I thought it was super good and really 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 scary um and if you want to know more about it you can check out my video that I do a whole book review on it and I'll link that below as well that was all the books I've read in the month of October I am gonna see if I can get five books done in November well we'll see <laughs> I really hope it happens. Thank you for watching this video. In the comments below, let me know what your favorite book was that you read this month. And if you haven't already, subscribe to my channel. I come out with videos every week. And I will see you guys next time.